I am very happy to invite the postdoctoral fellow of Dr. Elangovan, Madam Dr. B. Subha, Nano Science the Center for Nano Science and Technology, Chennai. She publishes 24 international journals and 18 national journals. And uh, Madam specialized in nanotechnology, biochemistry, and cancer biology. Madam completed projects of eight MTEP scholars and 33 BTEP scholars. Our chief guest achieved so, so many awards and awards from different various institutions. She had many collaborations with many other institutions. Now I hand it over the session to our chief guest, madam. Now I hand it over. Welcome, madam. Good morning. Good morning, madam. Can you hear me? Yes, yeah, you can hear me. Can yeah, you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we are hearing you, ma'am. Audible, ma'am, but sound, uh, some sound is coming. Just uh, see that, ma'am. Can you hear me clearly now? So? Hello? Yes, ma'am. Shall I share my screen? Yeah, now what, ma'am? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello, sir. Yes, yes, I have done Hello. Shall I start the session, sir? Yes, yes. Uh, good morning, I'm not present here. And I am uh, Shiva. 
then the post of the matter Should I change the uh, any options here over here? Polymers, 
Your slide is not visible, ma'am. You can switch off your video, then you can uh, like you uh, share a screen. Now, your voice is breaking, ma'am. There is any internet problem on your side. While sharing your screen, you just switch it off in your video, ma'am. Then it will be all right. I think so because it is a low, uh, low bandwidth. Okay. Okay.
हेलो सर आई एस मैम सर कैन यू सी द स्लाइड सर नो आई एस मैम नाउ ओनली शेयर बिगिनिंग शेयर Can you see now, sir? Yes, ma'am. Hello, sir. Can you see? Can you see the slides now, sir? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. It is visible. Is my voice breaking? Am I audible, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Sometimes it's breaking. Your uh, internet is fluctuation. Uh, okay. So uh, here we are focusing on three synthesis. Uh, uh, here, uh, why for uh, green synthesis? It's a, uh, it has very uh, potential, uh, promising. Uh -huh. Okay, okay. okay. The, uh, uh, give me a few minutes, uh, and then I will rectify this. Yes, ma'am. You can take uh, your time. Can I talk, sir? Pardon me. Hello, sir. Hi, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You are able to speak, ma'am, but some internet fluctuation in your yes, side. Sir?
dear participants uh, due to some technical issue from subha madam side uh, we propose to conduct our fourth session that is from dr nigel thomas from uh, nirmalagiri college kannur kerala i am going to introduce you about dr nigel in a short and brief way he completed his research under the supervision of dr mikhail rajamadi of st joseph college bangalore from 2007 to 2012 He completed his postdoctoral at Fritz Haber Institute, Der Max Planck, Germany, from 2012 to 2013. His H index is 17. Total citation is more than 1,050, and his total impact factor is more than 100. He is a young, energetic, but well experienced in research. He has so many academic achievements, such as JRF from DST, SRF from CSCR, travel grants from DST. best poster award in an international symposium at berlin and he received research grant from dst for an amount of 80 lakhs and an amount of 5 lakhs from ugc minor project he is a reviewer in elsewhere american chemical society and he has nearly 40 articles published in international journals in the last 3 years only with an article in a journal which has impact of 12.35 and the journal name is acs catalysis So, with this short introduction, now we hand over the session to Dr. Nigel Thomas of Nirmala Giri College, Kannur, Kerala. Sir, now the session is yours, sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you. Sir. Okay. Uh, are you able to hear me? Yes, sir. Yes. We can hear me, sir. Hear you. Okay, 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 okay. So let me share my screen. Uh, uh, is the uh, can you see my? I, ओके fine okay uh, okay it's going to be good afternoon okay uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity uh, i am very much humble to present my some of my results and also some uh, things about the energy scenario okay and i hope uh, a majority of the audience are from uh, kind of student side so i made a very uh, kind of a basic uh, presentations we will also discuss uh, some of the points uh, uh, on the way okay thank you uh, once again for this opportunity so my my talk title is catalysis for future energy challenge so now um, so uh, my work primarily uh, my post doctoral and uh, right now work and mainly uh, based on the materials aspect okay so i'm going to talk about the introduction a little bit about the energy scenario okay right now what's going on and uh, what's the uh, role of some uh, let's say methanol okay that's an example which i'm going to talk about in the energy challenge and uh, generally uh, i'll be spending some time with the catalysis uh, okay what uh, i was doing and what i'm doing right now okay and simply for students purpose little bit of characterization and applications okay and i will come to the uh, catalysis part okay okay then um, towards the end i will spend some time for um, telling what i do in a very uh, remote college in uh, kerala uh, uh, in kannur district Uh, we have a research lab and what we do there actually on a and day to day basis what's our work okay so my uh, previous work and what i'm doing right now okay little bit i'll share my uh, energy i mean experience in this field okay so now let's start with you you all know that the uh, the energy challenge what we face uh, you know today is actually the ever increasing thirst okay it's like uh, so you know it can't be quenched the thirst for energy and every day every every hour we need more and more energy we need more and more uh, systems with the light uh, you know 
with so many of usage of energy everybody for example nowadays you have lots of devices which you can carry with you okay you can take it home uh, now now i am also using a handheld fan which is a very very small portable device but it is it is used as a fan and it's used as a torch it is also used as a power bank you see like that devices are becoming a part of uh, the the human you you want this kind of energy to supply for all these purpose right and now our traditional way we know that we are depending a lot of coal petroleum natural gas and things like that very common and even you you know that what is the scenario now okay while well, coming to this place i mean i am in a different college i am conducting a, a university exam uh, here and in between i am coming uh, some time uh, so at that point of time i am just uh, was looking at the the meter the energy meter while while putting diesel you see i mean petrol has crossed 100 as you know right it's just keep increasing and uh, because of this dependency on the energy sector our everything is depend on this energy side right see as soon as uh, the petrol price goes high you you know that everything whatever you depend on like like whatever you are so in transport or whatever the groceries we wanted to buy everything increasing uh, like steadily increasing and becoming a kind of you know very unpredictable situation it's very difficult yes uh, excuse, yes pardon okay is it okay fine okay sir okay you can okay, go fine Okay, 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 fine. I, I was seeing some disturbance. Okay, anything is there, please let, let me know, let me know. If you are not able to hear or something. Okay. Okay. So now, uh, now we have many sources of energy, right? Many energy. And now the, the, the ball game of uh, chemistry and physics people, because um, I work in, you know, I would say that more physics than uh, chemistry, although I'm a chemistry professor, our research work is more onto the material side and uh, mostly, you know, I am associated with uh, more physics than chemistry. Okay. So in, in that connection, you see, we have lots of uh, challenges today to, to somehow, you know, we want to get rid of the, uh, the energy dependence on the fossil fuels. Somewhat, we wanted to make our life a little bit more certain, actually, because now it's very uncertain that, you know, it's keep rising. And if you plan for a trip or whatever, you know, it's, it's going out of control, right? So what we can do, if you depend a little more on the renewable energy, okay, then maybe there is a solution in the renewable side, okay? So, see, for example, I'm just... Uh, uh, quoting a figure from my own professor, he's a very well-known professor, Robert Schlogel. He gave a talk on uh, on the German parliament. See, uh, in Germany, the plan idea is like, if you, if you see the graph which I plotted, up to 2050, let's say 2022 right now, these bars are, you know, what is the dependency? You see, uh, you know, in 2050, you will see the renewables, the green bar is like occupying a major portion. See, and in 2010, itself you see nuclear energy because of the safety issues and other uh, pollution issues they are removed completely the nuclear source and now in 2022 they keep increasing the renewable content and in 2050 they wanted to run the system totally on the renewable fuels okay this is a scenario this is only only a country scenario but see you know in order to get that to that place, as you know, it's a very, very, very challenging. It's a very challenging for a country like India. It's very, very challenging. So, what are the, I mean, chemistry and physics involved in such kind of a transformations? Okay. So, it is. It is not. You know, it's an. It's not only really simple science. A lot of economics. Okay. A lot of politics. Okay, and lots of uh, other things are coming into picture here. Okay, so what we need, you know that even if you patrol, uh, petroleum you get, you see that 
the the raw materials have to convert to lots of other materials in order to get the output right we need to worry about lot of interconversion okay we have methane let's say ch4 what about other molecule you have to convert you have to refine you have you know uh, processes like big industrial processes okay you have wet reforming you have dry reforming you have methanol synthesis these are you have ammonia synthesis these are the huge uh, industrial processes which uh, which you know which are done by every plant in every country and uh, you know so much of ammonia is produced so much of sulfuric acid is produced and then using all these uh, chemicals these are base chemicals even methanol is the base chemical that means the top most produced chemical 10 out of 1 right so that kind of a process so we need to worry about the conversion okay that is where the catalysis comes into picture okay so you know that when you learn thermodynamics you know that we have to bear with the losses okay uh, it you know that you cannot 100% efficiently convert you have to but how to minimize the losses how to minimize the losses that is through optimization okay optimization so if you have a better catalyst definitely you are going to save a lot of lot of things right if you have a better catalyst so i will be talking a little bit about the why we have to understand the very complex nature of the catalysis okay because catalysis is a, is a science of controlling the course of the reaction okay so suppose you have a better catalyst you have a better yield and um, the catalyst which i am going to talk about little bit about the the catalyst called uh, for the conversion of syn gas to methanol which is a very very uh, a kind of a basic process uh, which is done in every country uh, and we need tons and loads of uh, you know material is produced using that process and i will talk little bit about that okay so as i already told oil market means is volatile in india is the best best example of what you call by volatile in the sense you see you have no control even though some people say that the price will come down but what you experience is that the steady increase of the price and you know you don't know who is controlling the oil market whether the companies or the government but for the public is like kind of a nightmare okay so we need some kind of an infrastructure change a uh, little bit little change so that you can move to an alternative fuels that will minimize the the greenhouse and the co2 production and all those things see looking at this graph you know that the global temperature is going up and the graph has the same kind of pattern which graph the carbon dioxide emission the parts per million ppm levels of carbon dioxide which is coming out and the global temperature you see the graph is you know going climbing uh, almost on the similar uh, kind of slopes okay so see why i am talking about methanol is primarily because i worked on that project for 2 years and uh, my group uh, in germany has been working uh, with this project for last 20 years so um, lots and lots of things uh, they have done even after you you will wonder even after uh, let's say publishing uh, kind of uh, i mean more than 10000 papers still there are lot of debates on the structure activity correlations and all those things still exist there is still lot of room for improvement this is a thing okay so the point is that uh, somehow the, the whole idea is that uh, there is something called a methanol economy i will i will talk very little about that so now uh, the methanol is the smallest alcohol as you know it's a liquid at room temperature uh, uh, the point is that uh, if you if you move a little bit on the methanol side you don't need much change in the current technology because most of the technology what we use you don't need a complete transfer because instead of uh, the liquid petroleum you you can handle the same way the the methanol as well and there's a better performance okay and why we talk about methanol because 
Methanol, I, first of all, I told that methanol is a base chemical. It is one of the chemicals produced globally the highest in, in top 10 chemicals. And it is used for so many production of other chemicals. Hundreds and thousands of other chemicals are produced from this base chemical. That is why we uh, talk a lot about See, this methanol-based economy was uh, proposed in 94 by the Nobel laureate, Ola. So he told that what we can do uh, here is that, for example, you, you have heard a lot about the hydrogen, hydrogen uh, cars and it's there in the market and it's running. And you know that the, the issue there is the storage. Right. See, when you, when you have a hydrogen tank uh, in your car or whatever devices you carry on, the problem is that the, the, the safety issues are a key a point there. Okay. Because, I mean, because as you know, it can explode. Okay. It's like, it's like, okay. For that, the, the current proposal here is the aiming at converting. See, the, the point is that you store energy. Um, Okay, in, in terms of a small molecule called methanol. And whenever you need hydrogen, you can get hydrogen instantaneously. And it's a, it's a uh, liquid at room temperature. You can store quite a lot. And whenever you want it, let's say whenever you want to drive it, a car, then on the spot, you can convert it and you can drive it. Okay, instead of storing hydrogen. Okay, for students, uh, out of here, you, you see that you know, the whole, the trick is in terms of bonds, okay? See, what, what do you mean by we, we liberate energy, we store energy? I mean, what, what is the real meaning? The, the meaning is that we, we, we play around with the bonds. We break bonds, we make bonds, okay? I can very, I mean, in a simple way I can tell, Energy stored in terms of in, in, in the bonds. Okay, when you break certain bonds, okay, you get energy out. So, like that, whenever is the needed, we can produce hydrogen and then you can use it for the uh, lot of purpose. Same way, you can avoid the, the risk of uh, carrying, a, a, I mean, the volatile and carrying a gas which is highly uh, dangerous, okay? And also the almost uh, so much of hydrocarbons are produced from the, from the uh, methanol. Okay, that's why I'm talking a little bit about methanol. And now uh, for the students, uh, as I told you, all these processes, all these processes, like the key industrial processes, every industrial processes, you need catalyst. You know that catalyst is somewhat, the catalyst I'm talking is about the, uh, the powders and the solids, which, uh, okay, okay. And most of the things which I talk uh, in this presentation is about the heterogeneous catalysis. That means usually we talk about the gas uh, as the raw materials and solid catalyst, okay? And when the methanol is produced, it is produced in the high temperature and pressure in the vapor phase then you condense and uh, take it, okay? But the analysis is done during the methanol uh, in the vapor phase itself, okay? So it's like, okay, you can see this figure. It's like catalysis is like finding a, a short route, okay? Okay, avoiding the high activation, okay, pathway, okay? is somehow lowers, okay? But that is very, very significant, okay? And some little bit basic about, as I told you, the types of catalysts, you have a heterogeneous catalyst. So your reactant is in one phase. And, uh, you know, usually in my talk, what you have to get is, I'm talking about the solid powders, okay? And my reactants are most of the time gases. In, the, in, the, in this talk, I'm talking about the, or the gases, okay? As the reactant and catalyst, as the, uh, is the solid thing, okay? I hope this is covered. So we have gas bottles filled with the syn gas. Syn gas, you know, syn gas, you know, that's a, it's a, it's a gas which contains, you have a carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide and hydrogen. We can buy in terms of syn gas, okay? And syn gas conversion to methanol is what we are discussing a little bit about uh, today, okay?
Fine. So these catalysis, what I'm talking about, is there for every processes. And uh, dear uh, students, you know that 96% of the all chemicals which you are seeing uh, on a day-to-day -day basis have seen some catalyst in their lifespan. That means if uh, some, some molecule you are making, you, you are getting, so you are, you are taking from your, I mean, you're going to the lab and taking one chemical from the lab, some stage it would have seen some catalyst. Okay, so this is uh, that kind of uh, involvement is there. Okay, fine. And uh, you have homogeneous catalyst as well. These are for just for your information, uh, which means that the, the catalyst and the reactant are uh, in the same phase and you have autocatalyst and uh, you know, you and work. And not only that, you have electrocatalysis, photocatalysis, redox catalysis, enzyme catalysis, and all those things. Whatever you do, you have seen that even in our body, you have many uh, metal centers which are acting as the catalytic centers. Okay, fine. So these are these are general. I'm just introducing a field. I, I'm sure that the the other speakers also. I just had a. I mean, some time to listen to them, and they also told about the uh, catalyst. Okay, so generally you have some stages, and uh, during catalysis, you know, you have a stage called diffusion. Unfortunately, uh, I had a lot of visuals, but what happened was like I had to come for this exam, and my 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 computer. I'm presenting from a different computer, so I cannot show you the animations. And if animations were there, that have been wonderful. Okay. So how, how these molecules are coming and landing on a surface, it's like your plane is landing. And you have some time, right? It's, it's like you can imagine like, okay, your plane is landing and it's a high speed, it's running. After some time, you know, in a, in a general plane, you are stopping actually, but it is again going taking off. So it's landing, something is happening and then you are taking off. But what is coming, is not the one which is taken off. There's some reaction is happening there and then, okay? You should not stick there, that's the very thing, okay? So either physics option or chemist option is the, the first step. Actually, your, your gases will come and land on the, on the surface of the catalyst, okay? And then after a smooth landing, they will have some forming some kind of a bonds between the surface and the substrate, some kind of an, uh, some the bonds. And there is some reactions taking place and then, okay, some new things are formed and uh, I mean, reactions happening. And after or before you have something called a migration, okay? And then you have to have desorption from the surface. So see, uh, the clear point is that whenever you have uh, you have uh, catalyst. Whenever you have a reactant sticking firmly to the catalyst surface, what will happen is that okay, you, your reaction is it's a, it's a bad catalyst. So whenever a catalyst is like a kind of an average fellow, I would say. Okay, I hope you get the point. It's not too good for the reactant. It's not too bad for the the, the product. Okay. Because at the end, you know, you have to take, you know, your reactants are coming and doing something and the products are forming and that product has to go out of the catalyst surface, right? So it, it is not too sticky. It's not, uh, you know, too much away from it also. Okay. So these, I will skip those, the, the surface and other thing. I mean, I'll keep those videos and uh, I hope you are seeing some examples of the great catalysts uh, developed, the, the process of synthesizing ammonia. Every year I used to tell the story of the Haber process, but this is not the time to do it, tell. But I'm very happy that the, I was part of the, 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 the Fritz Haber uh, group at the Maxlang Germany where they developed this process and the, the first catalytic reactor uh, during the war time, what they made is still there intact in the, in the lab, okay? Where uh, they, uh, they had, and then contact process, okay? Sulfur dioxide and, and, and many catalysts. And, okay, I'll spend maybe one minute on this catalysis. Okay, it's, it's the, the scientist of uh, life and death. 
I mean, why I am I am I am very much fond of this uh, this scientist because of course I, I worked in this institute uh, for two years, but other than that, you see, yeah, yeah, yeah invention which killed, okay, thousands of people during the World War has given bread to millions of people. The same kind of a story, right? So it is used to kill people, but later it used to give bread to people. And India is a country which got the, the, the lots of benefit of, upon this, uh, the whole process. Uh, actually, you know that the, the green revolution, what has happened in India, the fertilizers, our productivity from our land was so poor. And you know, when I talk about the, uh, when I teach disaster management for some, uh, some Courses. And there we study the great Indian famine. The famine had happened and thousands of people have died without food in India. If you, if you look at the histories, it's very, very dangerous to read actually, it's shocking. But from that time to a kind of, you know, very rich sources of, uh, sources of uh, our wheat or barley or whatever we produce, you know that India is very stable in terms of that kind of uh, productivity and why that productivity came because of the green revolution. Why the green revolution has come because of the fertilizers, how the fertilizers has come because of the nitrogen containing fertilizers. And at some point of time, people people had thought that this N, N, N2, you know that there's a bond between nitrogen and nitrogen, the triple bond, this bond is, you can't break it, okay? You can't break it. There's a time scientific community thought that this N, triple bond, N breaking is, is, is not possible at all. But as you know, that, uh, you know, necessity is the mother of invention. There is a pressure and they did it commercially. For that, one more interesting thing is that like uh, Edison, when trying to, you know, when he invented the filament from the tungsten, he tested the material from the whole world. And finally, he coming to the point that the tungsten can be used for this purpose. The same way they have tested around 5,000 catalysts before getting iron carbonyl complex, which was quite stable for this. And they built. And this process is, once again, I just want to tell that People from many places, they were trying to get this process developed in America, in companies and things like that. But the, the problem was engineering. You know that this reaction is happening in the high pressure. You know what I mean by high pressure? When you have a high pressure, the whole your reactor in the, every part, the parts you make, everything should be, you know, withstand this high pressure, okay? So anything can, explosion can happen at any point of time. It's a very, very, very dangerous in terms of this. And I also tell them why I couldn't, uh, I'm never thinking of setting up kind of a reactor, which I worked for, let's say two years. And here I'm doing at present electrocatalysis actually, because the real catalysis uh, to have this safety is, is, is a very important issue, okay. But the, the, uh, this guy managed to get the things done and uh, they, uh, okay. So now the methanol synthesis from syngas, that's what I'm just talking about. Syngas is nothing but, you know, it's a mixture of a CO2, carbon monoxide and hydrogen. This is a mixture. You can buy it as a mixture itself, okay? Or you can mix it up, okay. Fine. So as I told you, these there are there are many reactions happening. Okay, carbon dioxide is becoming methanol. Carbon monoxide also becoming methanol. Okay, but carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide conversion is happening. So this is the complexity. This is an intermix of three reactions. But what we want is that we want more of methanol. Okay, but fortunately, methanol is the main product. Okay, there are so many other side things, but these are the, the, the major things as you, as you see, we extensively worked on uh, this uh, from uh, all those time. And then, um, I mean, uh, these, I am also part of, I mean, all, all these papers where uh, we did um, lots of experiments, lots and lots of new insights 
we have uh, i mean we got lots and lots of new insight about this problem and also we could make the most active catalysis which is which we call a benchmark catalysis for the whole um, i mean i would say whole world and we had a, a paper where we where we described the the uh, synthesis of the most active uh, catalyst where you have all the parameters very well fixed so that somebody tries to make this catalyst again improve, they can have a comparison of values with the very stringent conditions. Okay, so kind of a setting a, a kind of a standard benchmark. Okay, fine. So the, the catalyst finally will look like this. And um, we also would test the catalyst in the, in the company because company also uh, is part of our research the, the people who make millions of dollars out of this business of uh, making catalyst, they are also part of this the, the research team. And there are some labs. Uh, usually, you see the the research. I just want to talk one minute about that. The the research here we we do very little time gap. Uh, for I can say that this catalysis will start, and usually I take a four hour period. I I will monitor the catalyst for four hour four hours. That itself is a huge uh, task. In, in terms of money, in terms of chemicals, in terms of uh, for four hours. Usually I test for four hours of four hours. And sometimes we test for, let's say, one day. But you know, uh, the, the previously, the, the, the group we were working, there are some labs which have set up this catalyst for one year. One year duration they will study because catalysis will be going on for the whole year. The reactor will be working for the whole year. Then we will study in that one year, what has happened to the catalyst? Is, how is the activity degrading? Okay, very involved work. Okay, no, not just for the paper sake. Nobody's working for a, getting a paper or something like this. This is for insight, getting insight because this catalyst is very stable. And I'm just introducing one catalyst. This catalyst is commercially called copper zinc oxide aluminum. Okay, so the active part is copper, but Zinc oxide has a very specific role. Al2O3 also has a very, very specific role. Okay. And this combination, the best combination, we optimize the best combination. We made uh, many approaches to optimize. Our optimized uh, catalyst was much better than what, what was used at that time. I mean, very recently, till recently in the industry also. Okay. So uh, as you know, uh, we work with the powders, but in real factories, I mean, for the industry, you see, you use some catalysts like this, whatever you see, these are something catalysts. And when you, when, where, whenever you use a vehicle, you know that there are these kind of honeycomb structures, okay? They are, they are coated with the, the precious metals, platinum, uh, palladium, rhodium, and all those, all those things, right? Okay. So these, these are the two catalysts, uh, some of the catalysts they collected from the suit chemi. There was one industry before going for my work, I visited this uh, suit chemi because they are, uh, they are, uh, they are, there's a factory in Kerala. They are making lots of catalysts and supplying to many, many exporting also kind of thing. So here is, here is the, the, the whole, uh, I mean, I'm just uh, sharing how we make, okay. We start from the simple beaker to the final uh, final stage of the real catalyst. There are some steps involved. Okay, it's a, it's a control precipitation. Then you have a washing. Then you have a heating. Then you have a, I mean you have a reduction. Then you have a catalysis. This is these are some of the some of the steps involved in this. Each step is very important. And you know one very interesting thing is that these catalysts have something called a memory. You know memory. Like it can remember the final catalyst can easily remember what steps I have come come up to. Okay, this uh, like like maybe for us we may remember our uh, I mean like uh, the old olden days as a, I mean as a student we will remember certain incidents right. Like this this catalyst will just uh, remember that means its properties are very much will depend on the treatment you give to the up to the final stage. Okay, very much it will remember. Okay. Fine. Okay. So uh, usually this is these all are for students. Okay. Usually we take some source of um, copper, copper and zinc and alumina. 
Okay, then you have a you you control the precipitation because the, the precipitation is called a constant pH precipitation, wherein you have you you simultaneously dose the metal nitrate and the base so that you have a pH which is which is uh, very much constant. Okay, and this is the instrument we use. This is uh, this is, is uh, my immediate boss and my co-worker they're working on and uh, let's come to this idea okay when you have a precursor material you heat that you make oxides and for the best catalyst okay everybody wants the best catalyst every industry wants a best catalyst but how the best catalyst will uh, will uh, be born okay you you see you need high surface area all these things you know that okay, you need high surface area but nowadays, people have realized that that is not the only thing. You see, a lot of defects are there. You studied when you are in MSc level, you study about defects in the, in the crystals. There are a lot of, I mean, defects, stocky defect, Frankel defect, and you studied something. Like that, uh, when, you, when, you, when you watch very, very closely and very much involved, then you see that these defects are very important. If you can create more defect, you can make a kind of, little more active uh, catalyst, okay? And also I told you zinc oxide is playing a very important role, even though your, uh, your material is copper. Copper is a good catalyst, but you know, zinc oxide is, is there along with it. And you may ask if copper is, is the catalyst, why, why, are you doing, why you need zinc oxide? But the point is that initially I was also very curious about that. What I did was, like out of my curiosity, when I just joined the lab, what I did was I tried to get the best uh, copper. I mean, in the sense, I take a copper source, I make copper nanoparticles, and I run the catalysis. But what, what result I got now? Within the second run, that means 10 minutes, the first run, second, second run, there is no methanol produced. Okay, the catalyst was inactive in the single run only. Okay, but as you know, this the, the real catalyst is active for uh, kind of two to three years. Okay, such a, a very well known uh, I mean, uh, catalyst. Okay, all right. So now, see, uh, this is a, some a step which I use. I hope you can see this. You I, see on the left side, you see some blue, and in the right side, you see some green. And I just want to tell a, a simple example to the students in this group. Some of the MSc students might be there, I'm sure. And you see, observation, even in physics or in chemistry, observation is very, very important. In chemistry, definitely, a lot, lot important. You see, you uh, see, we were working with this problem. Okay, so we have a fresh precipitate. You can see a blue color, very nice precipitate uh, is coming. But somehow a research student told, okay, he, he told, okay, okay, this has happened. Let, let's go for a coffee. So everybody in the lab went for a coffee and while coming, uh, coming back and they observed that the, the blue color has changed to a green color. Oh my God. Okay, so, so what's happening there? That's only during that time frame. what's happening there. So we studied uh, that in depth, okay? After, I mean, after something happened. That means during, once the whole precipitation is over, during the stirring, what is happening? Nothing is added. It's only rotating. But during that stirring itself, there is a structural transformation. There's a structural transformation. If you look at the XRD pattern, which I'm showing in, on the left side, you see that there, is, there are no peaks in the blue sample. But once you do XRD, X-ray diffraction of the, 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 the green sample, you see there are a lot of things. There are I mean, they're monoclinic, they're hexagonal, we could identify the faces and all. That blue to green and that structural transformation is happening within a, within a time frame. So if you're quickly washing it, you can get the blue itself. But if you're allowing it to age, we call this process as aging. So if you allow your sample to age, then you get a, something different, okay? And okay, we had a like a very, big uh, kind of scientific output based on that. These, these, these all are, for example, all these, I mean, all these things are different precursors we use for making. I just wanted to 
tell that how important is that okay okay so uh, how much uh, see what is happening is some high temperature carbonate phase high temperature carbonate means that carbonate is not going up, going away while heating at ordinary temperatures so it is getting stuck in the sample these carbonate had some role in the final uh, catalyst okay like that even though we say that this the, the 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 problem is very simple we will say that the problem is very very simple okay but uh, you know every once you try to understand the behavior in deep sense lots and lots of complication that is why after writing 10000 papers next day people are again some aspect still not clear all right okay and this is this is called and again for the audience i'm telling the usually the catalyst surface the best surface are the metal the metal surfaces okay so when you precipitate copper you are doing it as whatever you are doing it as a hydroxide you are converting it to an oxide copper oxide but as you know be just before the catalysis you need to convert that copper oxide to copper that is called a reduction usually this reduction will happen when you when you when you put a gas for example hydrogen gas at a high temperature what will happen is your copper oxide will become copper as i told earlier there is also zinc oxide and also alumina but during that time nothing is happening to zinc oxide during that temperature okay and for um alumina also nothing is happening zinc oxide is something is happening alumina there is nothing is happening but that's a beauty for that particular temperature what we give the copper oxide is converted to copper and copper nanoparticles are surrounded surrounded by zinc oxide and alumina in a very special way and that is why it's very stable okay the stability and also in this picture you see that you, what you have to look is that is that you see uh, the peaks you see at 150 degree centigrade to 350 you see if you calcine if you calcine the material in the initial phase at a different temperatures you what you can get you can do reduction at a very very low temperature okay all these are interrelated okay and also we we have to look at the morphology like the every angle okay i used to tell my students that you know if you use spectroscopy or microscopy what is, what is i mean i mean what what we are trying to do we are trying to find the real picture of a if of a material using by because we cannot see right our eyes we, we can't see so we are pricking the material using different tools we are just pinching we are scratching like different things we are seeing okay there's a well known story in malayalam that there are people i mean blind people going to see the elephant okay so what they do they touch okay they touch different part somebody is touching the tail part somebody is touching the uh, see head part all these people who went to see the elephant came with a different description somebody told elephant is like a hard rock somebody tell no 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 it's soft it's is that but what is the real picture if you collect all those information and if you try to bridge if you try every piece of a, is a game and if you try to put it in the right place you will see that all these fellows explanation is correct but this is not the if as such is not correct but it's all part of the uh, the elephant okay so in order to understand elephant if so, so much of information we can get we can build elephant like what we do in catalysis also with the many of these kind of information okay we try to do the pricking we try to do the scratching we try to do lot of microscopy and all things to know what is the nature of the sample we are talking about for example i can tell you a, a point about the microscopy see you can't trust fully one method microscopy will give you very nice tm and scm you know that without those two tools nowadays you can't go ahead and publish any paper okay because sem and tem anyway you have to take any simple journal also if you want to publish a paper definitely there will be a lot of images but 
I mean, one thing is that, you know, that information is coming from a very, very, very small part of your sample. Okay, very, very, very small part. That small part, people will enlarge and take a very nice picture in the sense that what you see, you will not be able to believe completely because in TEM grid, there are a lot of areas where you'll have a lot of junk. People may not highlight. Only the good point will be highlighted. They see some kind of a nano road. Only that nano road will be highlighted and taken. But when while we're writing in the paper, we claim that that material is, see, nano roads were synthesized. Okay. But the truth is that there are some nano roads. There are so, so many flowers or whatever is things like that. Okay. So one tool is uh, kind of when we trust only one tool, you will be so much biased. That is why we need every tool, every spectroscopy, every kind of microscopy so that we can have at least a better picture of the catalyst. Okay. So these, these are some of the morphology. So what you quickly understand from this picture is that, uh, and see, when you have different morphology, the point I told earlier, the, the catalyst remembers where it has come from. If the catalyst had come from, for example, a kind of a flower morphology, that property is different from that of a rod morphology. Okay, these are kind of a basic things. Okay, sheet structure, some, some are compact structures, all these are playing to do a kind of thing. Okay, you look at the stem image of a, a particle, you see, I don't know whether uh, you will be, you are able to see the nice thing in the middle, like, like a, like a rambutan, <laughs> like a rambutan, you see the inside there is a kind of thing, you see outside that fleshy part, that is actually zinc oxide and alumina are covering each particle very firmly, you see the, the copper nanoparticle is sitting, okay, to, to sitting in a very nice, uh, a nice atmosphere of zinc oxide, which is covering almost like every particle is covered and this covering is helping to prevent the agglomeration. Whenever you have the reactant comes there, there can be agglomeration. But you see that that can be prevented by this kind of a coating. Okay, to do this kind of imaging, we need to we need to. I mean, ordinary microscope is not enough because see, it will get oxidized so fast. So you may have to do the reduction process inside the. Uh, I mean, inside the vacuum chamber, and you need to play around a lot. Okay. So that's the thing. So this is the industrial setup, how it will look like. It's a very, very big plant with hundreds and thousands of people in every country. This is there. And, and um, it's a high, I told you, it's a, the high pressure. So what we did, actually, we, we and I mean, not myself, my, uh, my senior, who actually built uh, a small reactor uh, from scratch, from scratch, he built it. I mean, whatever the big setup, a small setup, build it, we build it, we tested it, and our all reactions are set up like that. Okay, we have gas and it's a quite um, kind of a complex uh, design, and we did it in the lab. We, I mean, we built from scratch, from tube to wire to thing. The, the reactor was made, and finally, the, the catalyst is just to look at this picture. There's a steel rod inside that you will put catalyst. And that will be inside a furnace. And you know, there are many things, okay? And you know that there are a lot of thermocouples as physics students, you know that, see, in order to get the accurate information, your thermocouple should be as close to the place what is happening in here. So there are three thermocouples we place. We place inside the catalyst, inside the, uh, I mean, each part, so that we, we see that the temperature a control is very accurate. Okay, there is no change. Okay, we keep monitoring the from the different different source. Okay, from the catalyst bud, we will take the reading. From the top, we will take. From the bottom, we will take. We make sure that there is no gradient forming. And okay, because some part can be at uh, two thirty degrees, some part can be two hundred degrees. We need to prevent all those things. Okay, and insulation and all those things. And you should pressurize the reactor. So you, you need these are the reactor we build. Uh, okay, and uh, you need a pressure control valve and all these uh, settings, all these wires and the connections and the tubes should withstand the high pressure. Otherwise, when you try to pressurize, some seals will break and you, need, you see what is coming out, the carbon monoxide. 
and carbon dioxide, right? Carbon monoxide, deadly dangerous. So we had to put the safety kind of, uh, you know, uh, the sensors everywhere. There's a sensors once, the, once some leak from somewhere, so immediately the alarm will ring and we have to close the oil supply or automatically it will get closed, okay? So much of thing, okay. So let's wind up. There's one more thing I just want to talk about in this slide. That is the one interesting experiments we did. We have, I mean, that, that paper is now cited, I think, more than 350 times. So that is like, uh, it's a very interesting, a curiosity question. Every time I ask students, you see, I told, uh, you, if you can see this reaction, if you are familiar or not, only thing is you have to understand is that I, in the same gas, that's the, the, in the reaction mixture, we have carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide. These two are two different molecules and then hydrogen. And in methanol, you know that there's only one carbon. So people will be very much curious to know what is getting carbonated. I mean, what is getting hydrogenated, okay? Is it CO2 carbon or is it CO carbon? Okay, you may think that that is a very, a very simple question, but that's... Uh, <laughs> Quite involved question because you need to do use the uh, the label gas for that purpose and those things are very expensive and you need to calibrate so many things but finally we managed to do that experiment okay and that published as a cover page article and we finally found that that the carbon dioxide ninety six percent of the methanol is coming I mean the carbon coming from CO two. Okay, CO2 carbon is converting into methanol, but CO presence is important, okay? If you remove completely the carbon monoxide, if the carbon monoxide is not there, what will happen? This catalyst will deactivate like that. We did a lot of studies like that. We used some, these are some, some catalysts we studied, okay? We, react, we monitor the reaction. You know that the mass signal, you know that mass spectrometry is there. It's a very important tool. You can monitor different mass species, okay? Different mass species. And then uh, you come to know that because when you act uh, radio labeled solution, radio labeled gas, you have you will monitor that kind of a signal okay that's the only way we can do the isotope labeling experiment these are kind of a different uh, kind of setup itself that is called isotope labeling this is a different study in order to understand the mechanistic features we use the isotope labeling quite common but these are very expensive these gases almost cost around five lakhs rupees for 10 minutes passing this 10 minutes gas is almost possible like five lakhs rupees just the the chemical itself the gas itself so it's very expensive okay and finally we proved we got a very big understanding actually in literature in 19 i think 60s people have done this question uh, i mean try to answer this question in the company fellows itself first this but they they didn't use the active catalyst they used the catalyst whatever they're in their company at that point of time then and not the real catalyst which is running. So we did, we repeated that experiment with the um, a running catalyst and we got some very good uh, thing out there. Okay, let one more point, long term, as I told him, what is the problem, what I do, the research which I do right now, because that is actually for a short time. As I know you, all this research is actually, short time is not at all a, a kind of a good approximate for the real reactions because I told you the catalyst for, especially the catalyst for methanol synthesis is there in the reactor for about uh, two to three years. So in order to get the, um, okay, in order to get the real field, we have to test long-term. Okay, we try to do a long-term testing. You see, we developed another catalyst called copper magnesium oxide, simple catalyst. Instead of zinc oxide, here you have magnesium oxide and there is, you don't have the alumina here. So you have a copper, you have magnesium oxide. You see, just changing the, changing the composition from magnesium oxide to zinc oxide, you see the nature has completely changed. See, you see, there are some points you see on top, on the left side, I have written pure carbon monoxide. So what is happening, this catalyst, this catalyst is a very good catalyst 
but working very good for this problem, but only if you have carbon monoxide and hydrogen. What about carbon dioxide? If you have some few ppm of carbon dioxide, if you just subject to this gas, then the activity, these, you see the red points, it is almost like dying, dying to the nature, okay, dying. That means carbon monoxide and hydrogen is there. This is very good, it's performing extremely well, but when you have carbon dioxide coming to the picture, what is happening is that the activity is coming down. Then what we did, we just stopped. We just exposed the catalyst to the carbon dioxide and we just closed the carbon dioxide bottle. Then what is happening is on a, like on a five days time, so 200 hours and 300 hours of stream, what is happening is that the catalyst is slowly getting regenerated. As the when you when you switch back, okay, when you made you make back to the carbon monoxide and hydrogen, when you switch the gas to the initial conditions, after a five days time, the catalyst is becoming very fresh, like the first day, okay. And again, you expose again, it will die, okay. That means there is the dynamic behavior, okay. Uh, carbon dioxide is poisoning the catalyst, but only for a for time. It's a permanent damage, but once you remove that, again, it's performing well. These kind of many mechanisms that we did with this one, and we found that what is the optimum and what's the deactivation behavior and all those things, okay? Okay, and uh, you see that this cover page is a very nice, um, we did a lot of theoretical work. Um, uh, actually, I mean, we were not experts in the theoretical field, but the Stanford University, there is a very, very uh, big, uh, we had a collaboration with a very big person there. Okay, uh, Noskov, um, he's kind of a pioneer in this field and they did a lot of uh, theoretical work as well, why this is performing and why this is a different behavior. Okay, so let me complete my, uh, my uh, catalysis in the initial part and uh, let me tell you a little bit about the, what we do right now here, okay? So we, we are actually, the, our whole idea is like design of materials with the tunable characteristics. We try to synthesize lots of materials using some methods and try to see we can use we can induce some control like not just like see this is a lot of materials and just some application but can we control the properties of the materials by tuning the um the tuning the synthesis protocol okay is it possible so like that we we did okay and we found out that the a new method see why we went to the new methods because you see uh, the constant ph uh, precipitation setup I thought it's a very simple setup when you are in abroad, we don't realize that. I came here and I asked the, the company that is Metro Toledo, uh, can, you, can we set up one, one, um, one precipitated uh, constant pH dosing unit? He gave me a quotation, which was like 1.24 crore. My God, I was thinking that it's a, just two, two pumps, okay, and a, and a kind of a glass vessel for that. That only for that much, you, you're caught in like, have you, I mean, I asked him whether you had some mistake of putting some extra zeros, okay, one crore, 24 uh, lakhs or something like that. That's, but again, then uh, I realized that so, so those kind of fancy things won't work because we don't get that kind of a funding. We get very minimal. So on that, uh, okay, we started then how to, how to go, move forward. So at that time, 2000, this is around 2014, we were working on this problem. Then we, uh, we, we found out some uh, fast method like, uh, uh, like solution combustion synthesis. Okay, that we did lots of work on that and majority of work we didn't write because uh, the time doesn't permit us to, we don't get any time, right? Every day we'll be busy with the students and things like that. So somehow we managed to write some papers and most of the things are pending, but we, we found that this method is a very good method. Okay, there are so many defects, but the, the point is that using this solution combustion synthesis method, you can get a catalyst in, in five minutes time. The, the methanol catalyst, which I synthesized for the earlier work, which needs a control precipitation, very, I mean, very compact and controlled precipitation. Then you need an aging, you need a washing, you need to calcine that very carefully. Then you need to finally load. But the solution combustion synthesis 
you 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 do everything in a beaker in 5 minutes time in 5 minutes your material is ready then you can do whatever you want okay of course there are some negative points as well but the very time efficient okay the, you you don't need any calcination you, you can do a lot of things so we we studied little bit as you see that uh, we studied quite a lot of things in the last uh, couple of years and we see that in in a beaker we can do a lot of things okay and not only just synthesis of materials we if you want to dop some see physics people are very much interested in doping for example you say zinc oxide is there in, from the zinc oxide from the lattice can we can we replace zinc and put something very precisely in that point it's not on the surface but in, in the crystallographic position can we dop for example can we dop magnesium can we dop i mean when you have uh, nickel oxide can we do little bit cobalt uh, these are these are very fundamental questions then how the your your things will work okay that's a fundamental question so we we kind of uh, managed to get i mean all those things uh, working right for example this is a simple system of nickel oxide system you see if you change one parameter uh, uh, fuel to oxidizer ratio you see you see that uh, in the top portion you see the pure nickel oxide uh, under 0.2 ratio but then you control slowly you see that there are extra peaks coming in that extra peaks are due to the nickel so you can get nickel oxide nickel whatever range you want for example you have nickel oxide also is there nickel oxide is reduced to nickel and you can get even almost pure nickel powder so nickel powder to nickel oxide you can control how much ever amount composites and all those things you can make based this method suppose if you want you look at this figure substitute you can very fine substitution you can do with this method also you can control the size control the size but controlling morphology using this method is a very difficult thing controlling morphology is very tough but controlling crystallized size is okay we can do that you you see see the pattern okay very broad pattern you can do substitution and all those things okay this is one approach we have also other approaches like precipitation approach where you have the this rc the new journal of chemistry we have shown that how you know how the temperature can bring down to 100 degree if you if you properly plan your uh, thing okay that is a test reaction is a hard boiled monoxide oxidation we we could do a at a very low temperature okay with that see this some new materials with the collaboration with german lab we have just finished the testing this is an unpublished work we we this perovskites so the new perovskites uh, which can be synthesized in a very short time and um, very short time also you see if you if you look at the screen you can see that the the uh, the lanthanum cobalt okay lacoo3 okay lanthanum cobalt perovskite okay you are substituting iron you see how beautifully small percentage you can substitute and beautifully it will it will uh, come and it will go to the other series lanthanum feo3 and how the catalysis is varying okay again how the catalysis is varying so these results are just uh, two weeks back from um, germany because it needs some uh, lots of weeks of effort to get this uh, data okay so we are working on that and also my uh, other area of work is on sensors the uh, last couple of years my one phd student and uh, my wife also is working on uh, the sensors and uh, see this is a recent article in sensors and activators we try to work on the change the uh, the b side cation in the perovskite materials and how to tune the sensing and uh, you know uh, compared to the traditional sensors when we when you use the modern materials Uh, see initially when i started the lab i used some materials for the for the sensor purpose i used to go to micromolar range you know the concentration range okay micromolar concentration but after optimizing everything i could go to the nanomolar concentration the picomolar concentration that is what we work with materials when you advance the material side you see how small percentage of materials and molecules you can detect okay using this and also we have, we have done and also you see uh, when you when you look at these pictures you will see that it's like a chromatogram okay you so see because you see it's a base to base separation is there 
unlike the electrochemistry these are electrochemical workstations but you see the, the plots are like you know base to base separated so uh, i'm working on epinephrine serotonin tyrosine dop i mean dopamine uric acid and all those things one example i'm just showing how beautifully how much very very low concentration you can uh, detect and also uh, i think i mean um, see uh, this all 2000 work and you see um, after some discussion in bangalore there's a company called the btl they are they are the european based uh, medical devices manufacturers so now i'm we are we are in discussion with them so that we think that our materials can be some point of time at least can be uh, attached into a real sensor these are now just electrochemical sensors okay we 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 are in a process to convert that sensors into a real sensor which which can go and look at the brain samples this is our great dream don't know how far it will work at least in human samples we are testing with the, uh, these blood samples urine samples saliva samples okay but it's, it's it's on our own i mean our own urine and our own <laughs> blood samples we are testing hopefully some point of time we will be able to test the real uh, brain samples with people with the diseases and things like that i hope uh, this company has lots of experience in making some medical devices like that so something and last point is this the the very new work um, so one week old work what we did is is the as i told you the renewable energy side we are also working about oxygen evolution reaction this reaction is a, a key reaction in terms of uh, in terms of fuel cells or can sing air batteries is are used okay and uh, uh, in this work what we did is like we have some kind of carbon hydride around, around with the perovskite and we see that the stability stability can be improved a lot the 10 hour oxygen evolution is continuously happening without any loss in the stability of the material and the performance okay so we um, um we did a article very recently with actually okay we had i mean i mean all this i mean especially you know american chemical society the review was a very tough with the, and also the numbers of three to four people are will you know literally they are you know uh, actually it's very difficult but somehow it's uh, it has come out we are happy that um, we are into the some of the energy related problems okay and at present i'm also working on the supercapacitors which are so much physics involved two physics teachers are working with me for the supercapacitor development along with chemistry people and how i compare uh, this uh, condenser when you invited me we were uh, together for a for a uh, kind of a very nice uh, refreshing orientation course in kanur university and we were good friends and he knows how we developed and how we work okay and um, with that i thanking once again the organizers and i'm very happy and i'm hope uh, you can contact me if it, if, i mean not if not for now but definitely uh, email me and uh, uh, and also i i encourage everybody just type uh, nigel research and uh, you will see our some work and uh, you can see if you if you want any research problem we we also basically do a lot of consulting in terms of i mean mosfet spectroscopy xrd and, and many many things uh, in in red pill refinement and uh, things like that complex things uh, uh, not only i mean myself but our group okay we have some collaborators also so you know, we can also discuss your research problems in case if you find some problems we are always open to this one we have also kind of um, uh, number of uh, research facilities like uh, xrd ir tg dsc uv and other things also many of the many people from uh, tamil nadu actually especially from chennai and all had sent samples earlier now i am the only one to do everything so um, now i am not receiving many samples actually okay thanks once again and if you have any questions i will be happy to answer and thank you for the invitation as of now there is no question sir okay sir just... they, 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 they uh. can I can surely write any time. Okay, sir. Okay. So, I am very much privileged to propose a word of thanks for this Nigel sir session. I think his lecture will induce the young minds in our uh, participant list, so that we can also give you a list of energy sources by 2050, as what gave in Germany.
so thank you very much sir thank you very much for your wonderful session now i hand over the session to dr subha subha ma'am naja sir thank you very much thank you thank you sir okay. subha ma'am yes now it's yours yeah now can you can you hear me sir yes ma'am hearing audible ma'am your voice is audible uh, okay okay so i will share this thing hello sir hello sir no you can proceed ma'am ah uh, okay yeah okay as i already give you uh, give you um, a brief introduction about the dream synthesis of nanoparticle and uh, now we can uh, ppt is not visible you can't can you can you now can you see the now sir okay 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 is this uh, clear no it's not visible oh i'm sharing it sir showing on the desktop for me and So now, uh, so can I proceed now? Can proceed now. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, good, good afternoon, everyone. As you know already, I have given you uh, uh, a brief uh, introduction about the nanoparticles. Uh, you know, uh, then uh, we are jumping into um, green synthesis of nanoparticles. Uh, we are now we are um, why green synthesis? Uh, green synthesis doesn't mean uh, there are so many uh, methods are there. Uh, in which uh, we can use uh, simple uh, bacteria uh, bacteria and uh, enzymes and plant part uh, biomedical uh, uh, molecules can be used in this green synthesis of nanoparticle in uh, especially i have worked on uh, uh, biomedical medical plants extract been used as a reducing agent uh, reducing agent uh, to synthesize uh, whatever uh, the design nanoparticle silver nanoparticle or copper nanoparticle uh, whatever the nanoparticle into the desired uh, um, uh, candidate of the nanoparticle uh, uh, this uh, why this green method is very important uh, when compared to chemical methods is it uh, it also possess some uh, uh, some good reducing agent uh, instead of the um, uh, plant extract which is reducing the uh, um, silver or uh, uh, gold nanoparticle into um, And this gold uh, nanoparticle, uh, silver chloride and the sil silver nitrate into um, silver nanoparticles, and there is no um, harmful chemical uh, present in this uh, method. Uh, there is no harmful uh, byproducts at the end of this process. And moreover, this um, extracted uh, metal 
flavonoids or uh, flavonoids or adabinoids which is present in the uh, plant extract may be useful for the um, um, uh, may reduce in the uh, sorry it is act as a capping and stabilizing agent of the uh, uh, end of this process uh, when we are taking in the chemical process we need to uh, say for example if we are adding silver nitrate with uh, some uh, strong reducing borohydrate agent uh, that will reduce um it reduce anyway but uh, it won't give any stabilizing agent and the nucleation will be very fast the fast grow of nanoparticle will be occur uh, so finally we get the aggregated particle so that we need to add some uh, polymers or some uh, some other uh, biopolymers to the reaction to stabilize the nanoparticle whereas in this case of a green synthesis we doesn't need to we need, don't need to add any specific uh, stabilizing agent because already this plant act plant biomolecules and some other protein present in the nano sorry in the plant extract is act as a uh, good um, stabilizing agent uh, here i have given you few um, uh, medicinal plants which i Uh, uh, say for example, Silusi Argentina, Cataranthus rosa, Cipomia pescapri, um, pescapri, and Cipomia uh, uh, pescapri, Cataranthus uh, lomaichi, uh, Ethna and Eka. These are the plants available in our area, uh, in and around. Uh, so I have uh, used these aquas and methanolic, ethanolic extract, extract of all these uh, medicinal plants. for uh, gold silver and uh, copper nanoparticle synthesis not uh, not only uh, uh, gold and silver i have been used this, this for uh, other uh, palladium selenium and zinc oxide also and iron oxide also mm, here i have given the different this like so see different uh, part of uh, stem uh, plant part of like stem gum leaf root extract of mimosa pudica and uh, uh, passiflora fortiata mukhya madrasa patna ficus parikas nejala sativa the seed extraction showing the very good um, uh, sorry reducing agent it shows very, very um, good anti accident and uh, good uh, anti accident properties in this so that uh, i have been used to this as a um, um, uh, reducing agent in the further work here you can see the uh, how we are preparing this plant uh, leaf or stem whatever it is uh, biomass into the extraction procedure first we collect uh, after the collect, uh, collection of uh, this plant leaf then uh, it should be washed and uh, shad dried then the powder uh, mean uh, i mean it is dried then um, it is powdered into uh, fine um, using sorry uh, making into powder with the fine uh, mechanical grinders then uh, the 5 mg 5 g of leaf powder uh, with the 100 ml of distilled water was uh, mixed with the variable and using mag uh, slight agitation at the 60 degree c we can uh, use some rpm uh, to collect the uh, pellet and supernatan finally we can uh, filter this filtrate uh, we can collect the supernatan uh, for the further uh, Mm, uh, or uses like uh, nanoparticle synthesis. We can use some mechanical filters or what one number one filter papers or uh, or any other normal papers according to their biomass contamination uh, in this extract. We are using this for uh, nanoparticle synthesis. Here I have given um, a simple extraction method of nagela uh, sativa extraction seed. The extraction method is will vary with seed uh, or if it is a seed it will be different. from and if it is a, um, a leaf uh, the extraction method is completely different i have prepared as of now uh, um, uh, methanolic ethanolic uh, and uh, chloroform extraction uh, hexane uh, it's uh, what are the biomolecule you need from this particular uh, medicinal plant it's uh, according to that you can prefer the extraction method 70% uh, 80% ethanol and ethanol uh, decoction will be very nice so that you can uh, the water soluble uh, uh, chemical compounds will be dissolved in the water molecule as well as um, the methanolic extraction uh, uh, organic solvent organic uh, materials which is uh, present in the plant extract also dissolve uh, can uh, dissolve in the uh, same uh, 
extraction then further we can suspend resuspend with the water the flow water then we can use this for further uh, reduction of nanoparticle here i have given a simple method of uh, gold nanoparticle synthesis from nagella sativa seed extract um, already we have uh, synthesized the um, nagella sativa uh, seed extract uh, we have powdered it uh, there is no we didn't get any good uh, extraction from this rather uh, we have selected uh, there is a whole seed soaked over the night and uh, we have collected this uh, extract for the synthesis of gold nanoparticle um, the aqueous extract of seed extract of uh, nagella sativa was mixed with um, 1 or 2 millimolar of um, auric chloride which is uh, after adding this uh, together we can see the slight difference uh, initially then after the, uh, the constant stirring with the slight uh, temperature uh, we can uh, see some purple uh, pink true purple color uh, 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 color variation which means so see presence of uh, synthesis of uh, gold nanoparticle which was further centrifuged uh, uh, more than 15000 rpm and then it is uh, stabilized and freeze dried and finally we can collect the uh, gold nanoparticle for uh, further characterization otherwise if you if your work is very um, uh, we can do it some work with the nano suspension you can use it as such otherwise if you are um, using this uh, particle for the some microgram measurements or something you can collect as a free trying method next one is um, synthesis of zinc oxide it is a green synthesis method um, in which uh, 100 milli millimolar of zinc sulfate solution is mixed with uh, 15 ml because uh, when you are taking silver uh, um, synthesis or gold synthesis uh, very minimal amount of uh, reducing agent is enough for the reduction because it have a very very mild uh, or one or two um, oxidation state whether we are taking uh, zinc oxide it have high um, uh, it needs some uh, high energy so that we are adding some more amount of plant extract in which then uh, once you are adding the plant extract to the uh, zinc sulfate source material uh, the greenish brown colors is appeared and after that um, we need to alter the medium pH medium of the solution so that we can um, we can uh, see the difference uh, after altering the pH medium it will appear like a turbid uh, yellow color or turbid white color which is uh, allowed to settle in the further formation of uh, after 24 hours um, the uh, collected uh, nanoparticle field centrifuge uh, at uh, 5000 rpm for 20 minutes you can collect and uh, dry wash you can use wash with metallic wash and uh, ethanolic wash up to your users and this is a very simple method of bio uh, biosynthesis of zinc oxide then this the, uh, this one is a uh, biosynthesis of zinc oxide whether if you are synthesizing this zinc oxide in uh, chemical method it will be very pure and white and uh, it is mixed with plant extract so it's showing in some brown colors here you can see the um, synthesis of iron oxide nanoparticle uh, in which um, 3 ml of root extract uh, is mixed with 5 ml of 20 millimolar ferrous sulfate solution uh, there are so many methods available for iron oxide synthesis you can use a uh, ferrous sulfate co-precipitation methods available and uh, ferrous sulfate you can use uh, ferrous sulfate and ferric chloride um, so um, ferric and ferrous chloride together uh, for the precipitation now i have just uh, used only uh, ferrous sulfate uh, for uh, for the further reactions mm, uh, to enhance the parametric super parametric behavior i have altered the ph of the medium you can use sodium hydroxide or ammonia solution or HMT solution. If you are adding all this uh, uh, pH altering agent up to 9, pH 9, so that you can get very good uh, paramagnetic, super paramagnetic behavior, which is controlling the nanoparticle synthesis. And uh, if, um, if the uh, reducing agent or if the, if the pH is altered according to that uh, chemical agent, the structure and the crystalline structure and the size and the morphology of the ion on a particle will be vary. Mm, that will be uh, treated uh, together with continuously 20 minutes. Then uh, you can get uh, easily you can collect the ion on a particle after uh, keeping the uh, some. Uh, one paramagnetic material or um, some magnetic material you can collect the iron oxide nanoparticle uh, here you can see the simple this first one is uh, aqua solution of plant extract the b one is 20 millimolar ferrous sulfate solution and mixed together you can see the black color solution 
uh, that uh, in fact you can keep some magnet over here uh, near the C solution this nanoparticle uh, will go and bind the surface of uh, surface of the magnet here you can see the mm, simple method of uh, copper uh, nanoparticles in the face. Uh, here it is a um, Fe3O4 and according to uh, your procedure or uh, whatever the desired material you want you can uh, in this method I have collected iron oxide. Here uh, you can see a copper sulphate solution. Uh, this solution uh, is copper sulphate is a source material uh, for the synthesis of a copper nanoparticle. Uh, I have uh, first initially I have collected zero valent or copper zero valent uh, nanoparticle and after that uh, allowing on the water solution it is contaminated, the slowly contaminated with oxygen and it gets easily oxidized. Uh, copper sol solution, um, 2 or 5 millimolar uh, copper sulphate solution mixed with plant extract uh, around uh, 5 ml of uh, plant extract initially then uh, after the reduction we can add some more uh, 10 ml of plant extract if you need if it is a 5 ml is need, uh, before that you need to uh, standardize all the ml or uh, source material milligram in before this procedure. It will be very helpful for you to get um, uh, size reduced or morphology controlled nanoparticle, desired uh, uh, size. And then if you are mis uh, after mixing this copper sulphate with the plant extract, um, it will be heated and agitated uh, for 30 minutes and the heat up to 80 degrees C. You can uh, see the uh, slight precipitation. Uh, in some cases, you can change the um, pH of the medium. Uh, pH of the medium, you can easily collect the uh, copper sulphate. Uh, in this case, I just uh, uh, added only plant extract and not any pH alteration. Uh, a two method I have prepared and uh, one is altering the pH, one is I didn't al alter any um, pH of the medium. So finally I have collected the, the um, aqueous uh, the precipitated copper sulphate which was uh, further um, so resuspended and water washed. Uh, this one is a collected, collected um, copper sulphate, uh, sorry, copper nanoparticle after the centrifugation. Um, this slides in this we can uh, enormously know the phytochemical and antioxidant analysis of the plant extract and the synthesized nanoparticle. Why we need this uh, phytochemicals and antioxidant analysis in this uh, bio uh, biological application doesn't mean um, phytochemicals. Phyto means plant chemicals. Uh, something uh, some uh, few uh, flavonoids, uh, alkaloids, uh, glycosylates which is present in the secondary metabolite present in the plant extract um, which is we are uh, this um, chemical compound we are going to use as a reducing agent in which um, it is uh, this uh, phytochemical assets very very helpful for you to sort out what are the exact chemicals responsible for the reduction of silver nitrate or uh, copper sulphate or iron oxide iron sulphate whatever it is you are using. Mm, so uh, this one you can narrow down the what are the exact chemicals because uh, most of the research studies saying like um, uh, carbohydrate are present in the um, uh, juice or uh, some medicinal extract we have uh, aldehyde CHO group or ketone uh, TW bond uh, uh, ketone group or alcohol group which is very susceptible to reduce the um, uh, simple molecules. Uh, metallic nanoparticle. Whereas um, if it is not present, some uh, some other alkaloids, flavonoids may be responsible for the, for the uh, reduction of, uh, uh, just for example, I am taking silver nanoparticle. Uh, in, if you want to further narrow down the phytochemical analysis, you can go for GTMS analysis um, or NMR analysis or FT. FTR does not show uh, that much of because it is a combination of synergic uh, combination of uh, reduction of all the chemicals into nanoparticles so that um, hopefully uh, FDR does not show that much of difference uh, you, you can uh, you cannot say any uh, what are the biomolecule present in the um, sorry present in the plant extract response for the reduction and this anti acid analysis is very important TPPH is does not mean um, it is a um, free radical, it is a chemi uh, artificial free radical, it is a 2 two diphridide, 1 uh, petrolyl hydroxide compound, it is, it is a artificial uh, artificial uh, uh, free radical, uh, 
uh, show in uh, purple color uh, crystalline powder which add when you are adding this uh, plant extract to this um, synthesized uh, anti-athletic pH which shown like uh, sir, can you, am I audible, sir? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Are you? Uh, okay, okay. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, so that uh, the TPPK analysis, we can see the um, um, antioxidant properties of uh, nanoparticle as well as the plant excitor. Uh, here, you can see the some uh, result. We started with 10 microgram to uh, 10 microgram per ml to 500 microgram. Um, so, uh, I just compared the plant extract and silver synthesized silver nanoparticle, palladium nanoparticle, selenium, and uh, which is compared with uh, standard quercetin. Uh, it's, a, it's a natural, uh, quercetin is a natural antioxidant which is uh, helpful for the scavenging the free radicals. Um, um, relatively, plant extract, plant extract and quercetin have high amount of antioxidant property when compared to uh, uh, nanoparticle. Why uh, these nanoparticle poses uh, at least a low amount of uh, free radical scavenging uh, uh, capacity because of I believe that there are some um, medical compound flavonoids or something, some alkaloids, saponoids may be uh, capped on the surface so that it uh, showing some um, antioxidant pro uh, property again DPPK analysis. Then here uh, I have uh, shown you some uh, my lab made uh, phytochemical assays. Uh, these are the assays uh, which is uh, helpful for you to narrow down the um, particular compound response for the reduction. Um, here, uh, here this result showing for the um, Nagella sativa seed extract, uh, it doesn't show any carbohydrate, which means uh, response uh, Nagella sativa seeds uh, predominantly have anthroquinone, which uh, about 40 percentage of anthroquinone present in this uh, seed extract. It might be the uh, uh, responsible for the reduction of uh, silver, uh, sorry, um, gold chloride into gold nanoparticle. And rest of the molecule alkaloids then is also present in this and uh, it doesn't contain any proteins so that you can say clearly uh, these um, uh, nanoparticle uh, surface uh, capped with anthroquinone and other uh, biomedicals uh, when compared to uh, some protein molecules because most of the studies are saying um, proteins are the um, protein or polymers are the very good uh, capping agent in the bio, uh, green synthesis method. Here you can see the lab made DPPH analysis of silver nanoparticle, silver nanoparticle as well as the seed, seed ex, uh, sorry, gold nanoparticle as well as the uh, seed extract. When the concentration of um, uh, concentration of nanoparticle as well as the plant extract is increasing, and uh, the relatively DPPH and the antioxidant property also increases. Uh, in some point, the uh, gold nanoparticle antioxidant property is uh, significantly high when compared to plant extract because of the maybe uh, it ha it having high surface to volume ratio, it may be interfere with the reduction of uh, uh, DPPH uh, chemicals. Here you can see the uh, uh, after synthesizing of nanoparticle, you can see the um, uh, UV spectroscopy analysis. Uh, this uh, synthesized um, silver nanoparticle observing the UV light at 489 nanometer um, started from 400 to uh, 400 to uh, 300 to uh, 400 or 450 is showing the presence of uh, significant presence of uh, uh, silver nanoparticle and the broadening of peak uh, and the, and the double peak or sharpening of peak shows the um, uh, particle is controlling the shows the uh, particle size. Um, then the, from the FTR analysis, uh, we can uh, conclude that uh, plant, plant extract as well as the nanoparticle, silver nanoparticle contain the same mm -hmm. biomolecule which is present in the plant extract. In, the, in this method, we have collected the nanoparticle and dried and washed. After that, we have given this for analysis, even then it has shown some plant extract results. Um, here you can see the uh, crystalline uh, size or oh, crystalline structure of the gold, synthesized gold nanoparticle and the uh, uh, 
triple one and two double zero. These are the uh, uh, clear, uh, yeah, clear images of a clear uh, picture is one of uh, gold nanoparticle are uh, in uh, spherical in shape. And uh, here you can see the uh, UV analysis of a uh, gold nanoparticle. This gold nanoparticle have absorbed the UV light at two different uh, nanometer uh, wavelengths. One is uh, 534 nanometer and another one is 360, uh, 635 uh, which means uh, there is uh, two different uh, uh, structure microstructures are present in the um, solution which was further revealed with the uh, stem and TEM analysis. Here you can see the different analysis of, uh, sorry uh, uh, see the um, XRD pattern of XRD and EDAX pattern. XRD for the crystalline size of the nanoparticle. Um, uh, triple one, uh, uh, two theta value, 38, 46, 67, 78, see uh, crystalline amorphous, uh, crystalline structure of size of the uh, silver nanoparticle. The EDAX value shows the um, uh, silver half uh, contaminated with oxygen or it may be bind with the silver oxide. Uh, which was uh, the elemental composition or clearly uh, revealed in this EDAX analysis. This one is synthesized nanoparticle EDAX pattern of, uh, uh, sorry, XID pattern of iron oxide. And here you can see the VSM analysis uh, of uh, iron oxide, which so shows the uh, there is uh, there is no hysteria loop in the magnetization, which means the synthesized nanoparticle, green synthesized nanoparticle are shows it. Uh, very good uh, super paramagnetic uh, uh, property. And these uh, pa super paramagnetic properties is very useful for the uh, drug delivery, targeted drug delivery, and MRI scanning. Uh, we can uh, act, we can control the drug direction. We can control the uh, movement of the particle, and uh, this is also employed uh, in um, hyperthermia applications. Uh, this slide shows the SEM and TEM images of synthesized silver nanoparticle. Uh, it's a spherical, spherical, or oval, spherical in shape, and the size is about 20. It started from 20 to 100 nanometer. Maybe it will be in very less. Uh, it's a start. Maybe it started from uh, 20 to 100 nanometer in ranges. Um, if uh, the same pattern for found is palladium nanoparticle. Here I have synthesized uh, silver and palladium nanoparticle in neutral pH uh, with the aqua solution. If you are changing the pH of the solution, uh, it may be, maybe the size will be vary from uh, uh, spherical to some uh, changes of the pH of what are the reducing or altering pH compound you are using. Here we can see the uh, gadolinium nano flowers and nano rods. Uh, this pictures, uh, this images, the same images clearly show you uh, when the uh, medium is changes into gadolinium. This gadolinium, uh, uh, sorry, gadolinium chloride treated with uh, hexamethylene tetramine uh, at 250 degree C, so so that we can you can see the clear picture of um, uh, nano flowers. Uh, these nano flowers can carry. Um, some good amount or uh, some high amount of uh, drugs, uh, drugs in drug delivery, certain drug release, and that's an another. Uh, uh, this uh, these two images show the uh, gadolinium chloride is synthesized with the, um, uh, some other uh, sodium hydroxide as, as well as um, uh, as well as uh, hexamethylene uh, triamine. Uh, we ha I have been used to some uh, three or more uh, uh, more chemical reducing agent uh, for this synthesize. Uh, according to the pH uh, changes, it's the morphology of the nanoparticle or uh, changes. Uh, Generally, naturally have uh, some uh, good paramagnetic uh, uh, paramagnetic property. Um, this paramagnetic and fluorescent property is very useful for the detection of a cancer cell in MRI. It's already employed in uh, the gadolinium oxide as used as a uh, MRI uh, T1 T2 relaxation agent in MRI scanning and CT scan, MRI scanning alone, I guess. Um, here, gadolinium nanorod growth with a different temperature and a different medium. 
this one is uh, two, uh, 200 in ranges, this one is uh, 280. Uh, when the temperature and the medium is changes, the growth rate of the uh, gadolinium nanorods also changes. Uh, and finally, we can see the, uh, the pictures, the nanos, uh, nanocellulose film. Nanocellulose film is coated with um, silver uh, nanoparticle and monomolate clay, which have been used for the um, wound dressing uh, applications. In this image it shows, uh, first one is Nechala uh, Sataba, the seed extract contains some plant debris, uh, the A and B, and C and D show the magnified uh, view of gold nanoparticle. I can't see any clear images, uh, spherical uh, images with this uh, stem images, uh, so that I have gone for uh, HR terminals. There you can see some clear images. some clear images of um, biosynthesized nano, uh, gold nanoparticle. Here you can see the zing of, uh, synthesized zinc of the nanoparticle and that ADAX value. This about, um, um, you can see the, um, the synthesis nanoparticle very uh, nano in shape so that you can see in the penetration, uh, you can't, uh, uh, electron focus, uh, electron doesn't focus on the nanoparticle zinc oxide so that you can uh, go for further analysis like uh, higher time, HR time uh, and so on. Uh, the elemental uh, analysis shows the um, presence of um, zinc oxide uh, materials with the different uh, composition. Zinc is present high high uh, amount. Uh, and then uh, the last one is copper nanoparticle, copper oxide, which shows some uh, uh, mousy appearance. You can see some uh, clear picture in this. It's a copper nanoparticle shows a high. Uh, it's about uh, 100 to 200 nanometers which was further analysis with the HRTEM analysis. Here you can see the uh, HRTEM images of uh, selenium nanoparticle, palladium, palladium and silver copper. Uh, copper is uh, TEM images, bio TEM images. Uh, the first, from the first uh, A images, you can see the uh, silver nanoparticle is, uh, is also synthesized from, from uh, green uh, synthesis of kildodendron from IG. There's a plant extract is a neutral pH. So that uh, it does uh, have high uh, energy, so it w it was uh, taken uh, more than uh, more than uh, two to three hours to synthesize this uh, selenium uh, oxide or selenium nanoparticle uh, over the when compared to silver nano silver and gold nanoparticle. Uh, silver and gold nanoparticle you can synthesize within uh, ten to ten to fifteen minutes or within half an hour you can uh, the color will be appeared the brown color or pink color. Uh, uh, you are taking, uh, go, uh, sorry, um, gadolinium, if you are taking copper nanoparticle, zelene nanoparticle, palladium nanoparticle, it, it will take high energy to synthesize according to their um, um, uh, reducing agent uh, co and the reducing agent concentration, the time uh, concentration, everything will influence, influence the uh, particle size and shape. The next picture is shows the um, synthesis, uh, uh, green synthesis of uh, palladium nanoparticle and third and fourth shows the um, synthesis of the same silver nanoparticle with the different magnificence. You can see the uh, even atomic pattern of uh, silver nanoparticle. Finally, the E images with the different uh, morphology of a copper nanoparticle. Uh, why is I have been synthesized with a different structure? Each structure will influence the biological applications. Uh, see the cell. If you are taking the cell penetration or antibacterial activity or some other applications like um, like uh, if it is a um, MRI application, the nanoparticle size and shape will influence the entrance uh, entering of this uh, penetration of nanoparticle into the cells. And after that only it can perform any work inside of the cells or cancer cell, targeted cancer cell or targeted drug delivery uh, or some other uh, hypothermia application. So that the size and shape is everything important for the biological application. Here you can see the HRTM images of gold nanoparticle. Uh, you see already I have shown you two peaks, uh, two peaks in silver uh, for gold nanoparticle synthesis. One is 535 and another one is uh, I have got two uh, size, uh, two shapes in morphology. One is uh, um, trigonal and other one is spherical in shape. 
it's about uh, 100 nanometers and the second one is gold nano uh, sorry silver nanoparticle it functions with some uh, uh, natural proteins uh, collagen uh, protein um, it is about um, it's uh, 5 nanometers and the final one is gadolinium nano rods you can see the finally the gadolinium nano rod we have prepared for the mri application because i already have some uh, fluorescent property it will fluor um, uh, to to imaging the uh, cancer cell targeted cancer cell it's about um, uh, 10 to 5 nanometers now this slide you can see the um, selenium nanoparticle with the um, spindle shape as well as the spherical shape Uh, then particle size, particle size and zeta potential. Why particle size and zeta potential is important for the applications? Doesn't mean uh, we can uh, the, the, all the particle. We can't synthesize the, all the particle in same size. That's the main disadvantage of green synthesis over the chemical synthesis. Uh, after the synthesis, we can add uh, some uh, artificial or some chemically synthesized polymers. Uh, but anyway, it's coming under chemical synthesis. Now here, uh, particle size um, showing uh, this analysis shows the uh, hydrodynamic mean size of uh, particle uh, and the particle dispersity. Particle according to the particle dispersity and the mean size, we can uh, select. Uh, this nanoparticle for further applications like if it is a very less uh, pa uh, I mean uh, particle dispersity or uh, mean size will be very uh, less uh, so so that we can use this for uh, um, biological application so according, uh, according to the size and shape um, the particle mean size we can use for um, drug delivery uh, drug delivery what kind of drug we can attach uh, what kind of uh, functionalization material we can use on the surface uh, these are play the important role in the selection of uh, uh, sorry selection of particular application or targeted drugs. And this is a zeta potential of selenium nanoparticle is about a minus 6.02 millivolt. Uh, this uh, um, zeta potential uh, of a surface charge it shows the surface charge of the uh, all the nanoparticles. Um, this surface charge again play the role in the killing mechanism of uh, uh, if you are uh, say, saying for uh, uh, silver uh, it shows if it is uh, positive charges it will go and bind the surface of the bacteria a negative uh, wall that uh, uh, say for example if it is a E. coli it will go and find the surface of the bacteria and will uh, disturbing the cell wall mechanism and uh, it goes out the cell organelles thereby it is killing the uh, bacterial colonization. Uh, uh, here it is uh, the surface uh, charge of the nanoparticle is very important for the biological function. Uh, the um, biological is it a, uh, bi surface charge of the nanoparticle may vary uh, according to their pH. If you are taking the pH uh, uh, around the acidity, it will show positive result, um, uh, positive uh, surface charge. And uh, if you are taking um, uh, nanoparticle in the neg uh, sorry uh, uh, basic medium it will show it might show negative uh, charges it is already proven one now uh, we are coming uh, to the biomedical applications uh, here uh, biomedical applications after the synthesis of nanoparticle we are uh, first we have to uh, subjected this nanoparticle into uh, cytotoxicity or anti-cancer activity uh, that which is otherwise we used to call is a MTT assay. The first one is uh, control Hep G2. Hep G2 is a liver cancer cell uh, and the B1 is uh, silver nanoparticle treated Hep G2 cell. And after the treated, after the um, uh, control cell, uh, the uh, cancer cell treated with the silver nanoparticle and the stability and the attachment and the um, killing mechanism is uh, relatively high when compared to other doses. Um, the IC50 value of uh, uh, what I have synthesized to silver nanoparticle is um, 21 microgram. Uh, um, when the concentration increases, uh, the cell viability of the cell, cell, cell viability also uh, cell viability.
cancer cells. Uh, I mean, uh, there, there we can allow this uh, cancer cell for uh, after the incubation of. Hello, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Can't hear you. Yeah. After uh, after uh, after this MTT procedure, we have to do uh, the flow cytometer analysis of uh, silver nanoparticle for uh, different hours, 24 hours, 48 hours, uh, according to their cancer cell doubling time. If it is a uh, HEC2 cells or uh, MCF cell, uh, breast cancer cell, it can take up to 48, 72 hours, uh, so that we can clearly imply that at what stages. Uh, what stages it's interfering? I mean, and the silver nanoparticle or whatever the nanoparticle, they say nanoparticle can killing the, uh, sorry, interpret, interfering the uh, cell cycle analysis. Here, um, uh, plant extract uh, show the apoprotic uh, cell number is 18 percentages when compared to uh, silver nanoparticle. Uh, silver nanoparticle showing 32.83 uh, percentages and palladium nanoparticle shows only 2 percentages. I just here I have compared silver nanoparticle with palladium. Uh, palladium doesn't show that much of toxicity in the cell uh, cycle, it is not a desirable one too. Mm, even then I have uh, compared these uh, silver and palladium and selenium nanoparticle. Selenium nanoparticle show very good, um, very good um, apoprotic numbers at um, P5 stages. Uh, here, uh, silver nanoparticle uh, arresting the cell cycle at P3 stages, so, so that we can say uh, uh, more than 47 percentage of cells at the uh, P, uh, P47 stages.
why I can move this line. Again. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Here you can see the normal face contrast and the confocal. Uh, you can compare the face contrast microscope images as well as the confocal microscope images of um, liver cancer cell. Uh, after the treatment of uh, control uh, and the silver nitrate and silver nanoparticle. Uh, anyway, we have to compare the source material when compared to silver nanoparticle because in the silver nitrate also has some uh, cytotoxicity effect. Effect of... Uh, I can't uh, remove this... Uh, please move this window away from the shared application. How can I do this? The first A and B images showing the um, uh, green, uh, this, uh, sorry, after the treatment with occurring orange ethidium bromide, uh, this uh, green color showing the um, live cells, live cells of, live cells uh, of control cells. Uh, silver nanoparticle treated uh, cancer doesn't show any effect. It's uh, again, it's uh, showing some uh, very few, uh, uh, few amount of, uh, uh, sorry, toxicity over the cancer cells. But in case of uh, silver nitrated uh, cancer cell uh, showing very good um, uh, anti uh, sorry uh, anti cancer effect, which was further the subject this synthesized nanoparticle um, was uh, treated with the MTT and uh, cell cycle analysis and uh, confocal with the different timing, different concentrations, uh, different uh, doses. Uh, so uh, after that we can. Uh, take particular amount of concentration uh, concentration uh, um, doses uh, for the further in vivo studies. If you can have a good animal animal uh, houses or good uh, you have pretty big uh, animal uh, analysis I mean over your university you can do uh, you can do peacefully with the pilot plant studies otherwise you have to select or pick up all these uh, all this concentration over the uh, existing studies or you have to uh, do very good analysis in in vitro studies itself after that um, after the uh, concentration find out uh, uh, sorry after the concentration you have taken from the in vitro studies you have uh, implied this you can implement in the in vivo groups and here uh, you can see the uh, grouping of animals uh, in which uh, first one is a control one, it's a only treated with water, standard waters and uh, a food. Second one is then interested because uh, I have here, I'm going to treat only um, liver cancer cell, liver cancer cell, so that uh, I have used a uh, den induced, it then is a uh, carcinogen, den carcinogen, um, it's a uh, liver carcinogen. Uh, carcinogen liver carcinogen and uh, third one is uh, silver nanoparticle uh, silver nanoparticle treated uh, then used as well as uh, silver nanoparticle treated with it, uh, alternative 30 to 90 days uh, 100 milligram per kg body weight mm. we have to do a uh, different con in 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 vivo studies also we have to do different uh, concentration uh, different uh, timing uh, with more than 30 days it will take um, you can give uh, some approximately relative studies here only because if uh, if you have enough time you can do up to one year you can uh, one to two years you can perform this in vivo studies because the ca then cancer indu induction it, it takes uh, quite it is a time consuming process 
um, then after after this uh, in vivo grouping studies after the induction of uh, uh, induction of uh, nanoparticle and treated one uh, the body weight first we are observing with the body weight and the tail reduction the hair uh, reduction here i have mentioned only the body weight and the 03 uh, compared with the 03 and 60th, uh, 60th day mm. and the control track uh, showing uh, there is no um, uh, weight ch changes i mean it, the weight is gradually increased when uh, when you be taking good feed in the control track which was compared with uh, uh, <coughs> when you are taking uh, a yeah, treated <coughs> sorry induced one Uh, it's showing uh, it doesn't do that much of growth because it it will the growth will retard and the the rate the rate of metabolism will be decreased uh, because of the uh, disturbance uh, disturb uh, sorry malfunction of liver so that the weight of the animals uh, gradually reduced which was compared with the nanoparticle treated one um, which uh, which is the nanoparticle treated one is uh, relatively significantly uh, high but it is not uh, touch the compared uh, sorry uh, control one and the same uh, this pattern is applicable for the tumor markers uh, when the tumor is high in um, which is showing uh, usually show, uh, cancer markers will appear in the blood or uh, wherever it is uh, the blood uh, serum uh, when the cancer tumor markers uh, tumor is high or uh, tumor markers releasing some uh, proteins which is called tumor markers um like c a a a b uh, and the tumor marker is gradually decreased in uh, nanoparticle treated one uh, but not so good result in palladium nanoparticle treated one uh, then uh, after the sacrificing of animals uh, we have to see the um, targeted uh, uh, i have harvested the uh, um, uh, serum um, and uh, organelles targeted organelles like lung liver kidney is a fecal organ even i have collected fecal matters but i didn't show anything here mm. here as we have seen only morphological uh, changes of in the control and experimental group of uh, only in the liver uh, first one is control second one is then uh, induced one uh, cancer induced one uh, third one is uh, c d e is a um, respectively silver palladium selenium treated one um, but it is uh, treated one uh, uh, a uh, quite it is a uh, 32 60 and 90 days only we have taken um, but it will take um, more than uh, 100 days to get uh, back to normal uh, but we didn't observe that that if they have uh, uh, some uh, work in future that definitely i will do with the further experiment <coughs> here you can see the x ray images of rat group compared with the morphology of uh, um, bilateral and the transfer uh, the x ray images of control rat and photo of uh, which is compared with the uh, morphology of uh, liver after the uh, oral administration of uh, nanoparticle which was uh, the x ray um, and uh, x ray was taken Uh, here you can see the some uh, tissue mosses and cancer in this uh, particular uh, x-ray images mm. this is uh, histopathological analysis of experimental rat group was first one is control second one is um, treated uh, induced one then induced one you can see the clear uh, clear uh, cell pattern and uh, nucleus pattern of uh, control one when compared to uh, treated one treated one doesn't have any uh, proper nucleus and enlarged nucleus and the um, bilateral uh, tubes and the everything get vessels everything is ruined in them in this one and the nucleus is uh, even almost uh, the uh, then in this uh, liver is almost is ruined and um, it is doing uh, uh, it cannot do any uh, its metabolic it cannot involve in any metabolic function of that or uh, Uh, respective corresponding uh, animals <coughs> it is almost like liver uh, cancer and liver cirrhosis uh, after the treatment of silver nanoparticle uh, it um, it's uh, slightly uh, significantly get back to normal uh, but it will take some time to uh, complete uh, show the complete uh, organization of uh, complete function of um, liver it will take some time and that a good treatment of along with the nanoparticle and other supplements it will work uh, complete uh, it will work to get back to normal of uh, liver cell 
here I have proposed uh, some mechanism. Uh, here uh, uh, I would take only the selenium nanoparticle and the surface of amplification. Uh, but you can uh, take some other nanoparticle also. Um, the surface functions kildodendron uh, plumoidy functions nanoparticles. I mean, and the metal plant uh, surface functions nanoparticle. Uh, selenium. Selenium uh, is a it's a trace element which is present in the body, which is boosting the uh, selenium related enzymes like backbone enzymes, like um, uh, some antioxidant enzyme, which is increasing the antioxidant enzyme, thereby it is promoting the um, uh, anti-cancer property. Uh, uh, and this uh, selenium nanoparticle uh, further inducing the reactive oxygen species, thereby it is promoting the um, P53 and caspase 3 PRAP um, uh, cell signaling pathway and in inducing the apoptosis. Uh, if you are inducing this uh, silver nanoparticle, if you are, uh, if you can uh, convert this uh, selenium nanoparticle into quantum dots or some other particle, it may be um, uh, useful in the uh, cancer cell imaging. Uh, it's further involved in the cancer cell proliferation. proliferation um, and the surface functionalized uh, medical plant, uh, it's say for example, it is the naringenin. Uh, Clidodendron plumoidy plant extracts the predominantly contain uh, quercetin and naringenin. This uh, natural antioxidants further uh, involved in the P53 mechanism, thereby it is promoting the um, anti cancer apoptosis mechanism. Apoptosis, I think, means programmed cell death of cancer cells. First. Here the another application, sustained drug release studies. Uh, we are, uh, once we synthesized this nanoparticle, it was uh, functionalized or it was uh, incubated or uh, loaded with a drug. It uh, used to for the further drug release studies and targeted drug drug release studies. Uh, this the one of my papers I have published in. Um, uh, in an um, international journal, which was uh, showed the FTR spectrum of Moringa olifera gum. It is a Moringa olifera gum, it is a blended with silver nanoparticle, and this gum is mixed with um, ibuprofen and matalka sodium, uh, which was uh, characterized with the FTR, nano, uh, FTR uh, characterization and the functional group uh, being visibly, you can see this uh, even uh, A, A and B, so the A and B, C, D um, images. Uh, Montelukas, uh, uh, sorry, uh, this drug, um, uh, ibuprofen and Montelukas sodium incubated with the uh, gum and uh, uh, silver nanoparticle. It absorbed, got absorbed. The functional group can be, uh, you can, um, you can see the responsible group in the FTR, uh, FTR, uh, uh, FTR graph. See, in this image, in this slide, we can see the drug releasing profile of silver nanoparticle. Uh, silver nanoparticle blended with um, blended with Moringa olifera resin. And the first one is uh, Montelukas sodium, second is ibuprofen drug release, percentage of drug release. Um, just the resin and drug is show the burst release. And the second one is, uh, second line, B line, Montelukas sodium shows this, uh, Montelukas sodium mixed up. Uh, silver nanoparticle and resin uh, mixed uh, Matulka sodium showing sustain release. Uh, it was already proven uh, with a TG analysis. Um, uh, after adding uh, sorry, a TG analysis, so uh, some good stability uh, after this uh, 200 uh, after 200 temperature uh, more than 200 temperature, uh, silver nanoparticle can withstand so that it gives some um, hardness to the material. So it can uh, give some sustained release of uh, these resins. Um, thus, uh, before um, this one is uh, Matulka's drugs nanoparticle along with uh, polymers, polymers or resin. I have ordered, but in the in case of in this in vitro drug release, silver nanoparticle mixed with methotrexate is anti cancer drugs so made into pellet, which was uh, dropped into 200 ml of uh, um, phosphate buffer saline pH is uh, so 7.4 blood like solutions. Uh, at 30 uh, mild agitation, it was incubated in 37, and then uh, samples being collected and as, uh, measured for the um, uh, percentage of drug release addiction. Then third one is here. You can see the preparation of capacitamine loaded ion acid nanoparticle. 
uh, 50 milligram uh, is, is, if you are taking 1 mg or 100 mg according to that nanoparticle size and shape you can uh, pick your uh, concentration. Capacitum is anti-cancer drug, 100 mg ion oxide blended with a 50 mg of capacitum in, and then which is soaked with the password buffer for 24 hours with mild agitation in this uh, 37 degree Celsius. Uh, which is first uh, how we are loading this uh, uh, drug on the surface of the ion nanoparticle. Uh, both is mixed with it together. Then uh, the resulting solutions, uh, supernatant, uh, after the mixing of solution, uh, uh, sorry, drug with the uh, uh, ion of the nanoparticle, uh, the drugs and uh, nanoparticle will uh, blended together. And after that, we have to centrifuge the supernatant. Uh, the supernatant uh, will tell you the um, free drugs which is not attached on the surface of the nanoparticle, which is used for the uh, drug, uh, which is uh, this concentration which uh, will use for uh, um, drug releasing capacity. The pellet was uh, collected and the freeze dried for, for further uh, drug releasing capacity uh, study. Drug releasing study, the sample, uh, the collected uh, uh, silver, uh, sorry, iron nanoparticle with the dialysis, uh, sorry, iron nanoparticle with the drug which dialysis, uh, which is kept in the dialysis membrane and in the phosphate buffer saline uh, for 2200 ml with a 37 degree C. When the sample is, uh, after that, it was incubated in um, phosphate buffer saline. Uh, 2 ml of sam uh, sample been uh, the done 30 minutes in uh, regular intervals and uh, which is the 2 ml of PBS regular, um, immediately replaced by 2, 2 ml of freshly prepared phosphate buffer saline. This 2 ml of sample will taken in the UV um, UV, uh, UV OD uh, the UV OD is corresponding to concentration of drug which is released on the phosphate buffer saline. The capacitor and concentration is uh, samples was collected at two, which was read at 298 nanometer depending on the on your drug first you have to run the um, your uv body on uh, uv uh, concentration thereby you can see the um, uh, uv peak at what concentration is absorbing the uv light according to that you can fix the, fix the uv light and then you can uh, see further uh, absorption of uh, collected uh, um, samples for further use. Drug releasing study here, we can see the standard graph of, uh, first we, we have to make a standard graph of uh, standard uh, uh, drug, then uh, releasing capacity of 20 mg capacitor mm, uh, when the time is increasing and the concentration is relatively uh, increasing, uh, the drug release percentage also increases, which was to see the cumulative percentage of drug release. Here you can see the 20 mg of drug at a different time, uh, the first is zero time. The first one is you can see the uh, dialysis clip and the dialysis membrane. Here you can see the drug pellet, drug nanoparticle pellet. And that one is a semi-permeable uh, dialysis bag. Here's a simple apparatus. Um, you can now, you can see the 10 mg of nanoparticle uh, blended with uh, 50 mg of drug. Uh, you can see the drug releasing uh, capacity in acidic condition as well as the basic condition. At what uh, uh, condition it is, uh, the drug is uh, been uh, dissolved in the uh, series or in the medium, now, which was rated at uh, the particular uh, uh, acidic and basic conditions. When the uh, concentration of, uh, when the time is increasing, the, the cumulative drug releasing, uh, drug releasing capacity also increases which was further uh, calculated in the um, cumulative uh, percentage of uh, drug, how many, I mean, how much uh, the drug concentration will be available, I mean, it result in the perfect buffer saline. Um, if whatever the nanoparticle you are preparing, whatever the nanoparticle you are preparing, that is the Whatever the nanoparticle you are preparing, uh, that must be subjected to in vitro uh, anti-cancerous activity. Um, so, which will show in the, um, the clear cytotoxicity effect of uh, synthesized nanoparticle at a different uh, hours and different concentration. Like we have uh, here, uh, here we have uh, selected 24, 48 and 72 hours at 37 degrees Celsius 
with the different concentrations. The incubation for the three hours in the uh, dark medium, the MTT with the MTT solution. After that, we can take uh, different values, different OD values. The in vitro anti cancer activity of an, uh, percentage of incubation uh, increasing, percentage of increasing um, uh, slightly improving in 24 hours when the concentration increases and uh, the 42 hours the concentration increases uh, slightly in the milligram of uh, when the time is increases the concentration percentage of inhibition also slightly increases and the percentage of inhibition will increase up to uh, 72 hours but uh, it is quite uh, time consuming 48 and 72 hours are quite time consuming um, process when you are taking this is very uh, simple concentration in 24 hours Mm, capacity means 100, uh, 100 microgram per ml with uh, treated uh, treated in uh, MTT assay uh, with the different hours 24, 48, 72 hours showing the 100 microgram per ml. The percentage of incubation is gradually increases with the time is uh, when the time is increases the uh, killing pattern also uh, percentage of incubation also increases with a different uh, concentration and the different timing. <laughs> The drug releasing profile, uh, profile observed in the super um, um, from the studies we have concluded that the uh, super paramagnetic ion acid nanoparticle exhibits uh, good uh, sustained release when compared to other nanoparticle because it has some basic um, magnetic properties. Uh, and this approach further uh, being used in the drug delivery in quality control system. Uh, the in vitro anti cancer uh, property also shows the hmm, Percentage of inhibition of uh, to cell cell line lower the concentration of the capacitor along with the super paramagnetic and nasty nanoparticles. Uh, this method is to further need some uh, good relation between the in vitro. The few nanoparticles work in uh, very good in, in vitro, show good result in in vitro studies, but doesn't show very good um, very good results in in vivo studies. That's because of uh, the concentration must be changed from in vitro to in vivo studies. That must be we need to sort it out mm, with the pilot plan studies of concentration of in vitro studies. Uh, in vitro studies because uh, the concentration uh, definitely will be changed from in vitro to in vivo studies that, because uh, the micro environment and the blood and the lossing, digestion, uh, blood uh, sampling, everything will be changed uh, because uh, that micro environment uh, uh, slightly differs from in vitro to in vivo studies. That bit, the concentration must be changed according to the per kg of body weight. Uh, here you can see the um, zinc oxide uh, application in drug delivery. How uh, you can use uh, for the drug delivery application you can use egg membrane or single semi it's a dialysis membrane and uh, you can use uh, different membranes for the, uh, the drug delivery applications. Uh, drug being uh, conjugated with a nanoparticle, a selected nanoparticle and the nanoparticle uh, first is uh, it's blended with um, nanoparticle blended with um, and, um, sorry drug na, drug first initially is soaked with unstirred with uh, mild agitation and then it is centrifuged and selected uh, selected polymers uh, after the uh, drug loading uh, drug after the uh, drug loaded on the surface of the nanoparticle which was blended with or soaked with. Uh, selected desirable uh, binding agent or polymers, desired polymers, and then which is uh, packed, uh, the full complete pack is packed into uh, polym, um, uh, sorry, for, uh, for drug releasing um, profile. And um, packing of a nano cell, uh, nanoparticle uh, gel drug mixture in the egg cell membrane. This, uh, this uh, we need to pack this in, into the uh, egg membrane. Uh, for uh, in the PV solutions, for uh, the pH must be 7, 7.4 at the slow saving, slow agitation. In the uh, collected sample will be readed at a different uh, timing, like minutes to uh, 15, 30, 45, and uh, releasing capacity. The cumulative percentage and the cumulative drug loading capacity will be revealed the uh, uh, drug loading capacity of nanoparticle as well as the polymers and uh, drug releasing the, from this we can conclude the drug releasing uh, capacity of uh, nanoparticle as well as the uh, binding agent binding agent uh, when you are selecting your binding agent you need to consider all these natural polymers biocompatible biodegradable it should be biodegradable 
uh, it should be it should not uh, irritate your immune system or your toxic cells or it should support not to toxic your body and it should be it should have contain uh, excellent water binding uh, properties it must be um, Uh, thickening when dissolved with the water, when comes to the contact with the water, the viscosity might be changed. Gel forming ability, binding ability, film forming ability. These are the main uh, properties which are playing important role in the selection of binding agent as well as in uh, and the nanoparticle uh, selection also. Loading of drug on the nanoparticle is a is a is a kind of art. How we are uh, uh, the size and the shape. uh and and, and uh, the medium the ph everything influencing the drug loading uh, drug uh, loading of drug on the surface of the nanoparticle then um, if it is a um, flowers or the high surface area it, it can uh, ha- contain it can uh, possess uh, it can load more nano uh, sorry more drug on the surface of Uh, say for example if it is a biological molecule some protein so if you want to tag some nanoparticle on the surface uh by molecule on the surface of the nanoparticle it will uh, the size influence size and shape will influence 10 mg of drug is dissolved in 2 ml of methanol because i have taken um, here why methanol i have taken this uh, organic uh, it doesn't dissolve in water so that we have taken 2 ml of methanol the equal amount of uh, um, water nanoparticle is blended together uh, Added and then it was uh, mildly agitated and stirred in the centrifuge at six uh, six thousand RPM at fifteen minutes. Uh, then we can collect the supernatant as well as the um, supernatant as well as the pellet. This collected pellet is dissolved in gelatin solution because that uh, collected pellet contains uh, um, loaded with the drug. Which was uh, mixed with the gelatin solution, allowed for them. Now that gel composition will uh, this uh, complex will use to for the drug loading um, efficiency. This has to be how the apparatus, lab made apparatus. There is there is a specific apparatus for the drug releasing studies, but simply we have decided this uh, in our lab. This was the drug was uh, taken at the different doses at um, uh, 232 nanometer with the different timing. And the total drug uh, and the phosphate uh, buffer saline, av- uh, sorry, saline available for the maximum would uh, 20 ml. So according to that, the calculation will be different. So maximum release of uh, concentration uh, uh, with uh, um, milligram of uh, drug, milligram of uh, nanoparticle, uh, everything influencing the um, releasing capacity of uh, drug. Uh, first, we need to make a. Uh, First, we need to make a standard graph. Um, first, we need to plot a uh, calibrate uh, standard uh, standard uh, calibration of uh, for um, this is uh, for uh, metron dissolved benzoate drug. Then. After the releasing, we have to plot the different uh, OD values of um, um, OD values of drugs with the different concentrations. Initially, the percentage of drug releasing the at burst release um, with a zinc oxide and uh, nanoparticle showing the uh, burst release. Uh, once you uh, uh, kept in the um, membrane, it shows the uh, complete concentration uh, loaded on the surface of the nanoparticle. Everything is dissolved in the phosphate buffer solution. That's why it is showing very uh, uh, quick uh, delivery within the uh, time. Uh, whereas uh, the gelatin and the nanoparticle blended uh, uh, complete mixture shows the sustained release. Now uh, we are going to another biomedical application is antibacterial studies. Uh, the synthesis of the biomedical uh, synthesis of nanoparticle we been uh, tested against the um, staphylococcus aureus and klebsiella pneumoniae and escherichia coli um, this e coli uh, uh, the silver nanoparticle been uh, is a, is showing amazing uh, antibacterial antifungal and antimicrobial activity against uh, the so many micro 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 micro, micro. Uh, because uh, the the real uh, mechanism behind the uh, Accurate mechanism behind the uh, killing of all uh, uh, anti microbes, which uh, sorry, uh, the clear mechanism that uh, we didn't find it yet. 
but even then uh, researchers have uh, find out some uh, few more mechanism like uh, this um, a silver nanoparticle is binded on the surface of the nanoparticle, uh, surface of the uh, microbes, and it is releasing the cell organelles, and it will uh, also interfere in the uh, polymerase in the DNA replications, and also it is involved in the um, uh, secondary metabolite disturbance, um, thereby just promoting the uh, anti, it performing the antibacterial activity and antifungal activity. Uh, similar showing um, good uh, antibacterial activity, even the uh, anti uh, sorry um, antibiotic resistant uh, resistant uh, cells and resist antibiotic resistant bacteria. <coughs> and equally, is uh, when compared to silver nanoparticle, uh, uh, sorry, when compared to silver nanoparticle, copper nanoparticle are equal, have equally or uh, relatively less. Um, zone of inhibition uh, zone of inhibition uh, when the concentration increases and the zone of inhibition also increases um, also increases uh, with it at minimal concentration we no need to go for further concentration that a minimal uh, uh, minimal inhibition uh, inhibitory concentration will help it for you to find out a further development of the uh, antibiotic or function of uh, uh, antimicrobial drop the antimicrobial activity of um, Silver blended collagen. Uh, this silver being again synthesized from um, Gymnoma sylvestre plant. Gymnoma sylvestre plant, we can call it in Tamil, is uh, uh, Sirupurja. Uh, this Gymnoma um, uh, sylvestre shows very good anti diabetic activity. Uh, this anti diabetic activity, even uh, it can cure, so silver already possesses very good anti wound healing and as well as the antimicrobial activity. Uh, along with this uh, uh, Gymnoma sylvestre uh, medical plant extract, also uh, enhancing this antibacterial as well as the wound healing property. Um, that was uh, again functionalized with nano collagen, collagen with a different concentration with 30 microgram per ml and 60 microgram per ml and 100 microgram per ml uh, against E. coli and uh, Staphanthophilus bacteria. Uh, the antimicrobial activity of uh, silver nanoparticle, uh, sorry, uh, zinc oxide. Zinc oxide also uh, have uh, good antibacterial activity against the E. coli and Salmonella diffusion and Astrobacter acid. The concentration is started from uh, 50, 37, 25 mg per ml. Uh, per ml, when the concentration increases, uh, uh, when the concentration uh, increases, the um, zone of inhibition also increases at the, at the 75 50 point. Some um, uh, uh, salmonella type of mastobacter showing minimal inhibitory concentration. See, you can see the um, plus or minus values of 25, 30, uh, sorry, 25, 50, 75, and 100 percentages. Uh, at uh, 75, 50, uh, 50 must be the um, Minimal inhibitory concentration are 75. In case of Salmonella, 75 is a minimal inhibitory concentration. According to the bacteria, uh, depends upon the bacteria and the nanoparticle functions and surface morphology, everything influence plays a role in the minimal inhibitory concentration of uh, nanomaterials. Here, the wound healing by medical applications. Madam, 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 excuse me, madam. Sorry yes, for the interruption. Sorry yeah, for the interruption. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, we have a, uh, another one session, ma'am, afternoon. Uh, and ah, also, okay. yeah, lunch is there. So, okay. uh, please, ma'am, please go. go. Uh, up to this, uh, there is so, so many presentations. You guild uh, fully, highly presented in a high, highly manner. So, okay, please, uh, please be conclude. Uh, uh, is, is it possible, ma'am? Okay okay, 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 thank you. Hello? Yes, um, there are so many biomedical applications like collagen mixed with uh, silver nanoparticle and child. Uh, this is a one of the method is wound healing assays. Uh, then a targeted uh, drug delivery method. In the iron nanoparticle is mixed with um, um, drugs. We can show the very good anti-diabetic 
uh, uh, gold nano particles showing very good uh, anti diabetic activity uh, and also it's a um, so you can use this uh, nano particle in the dye degradation uh, purpose also and which was used in the further irrigation uh, plant cultivation process and uh, finally it will be used for uh, nano particle blended uh, um, biopolymers polymers can employ in the food packaging material uh, here we can see the uh, lot of applications in the biological oriented we can do uh, see it in the further session uh, briefly um, even in the MRA and the hypothermia application, everything will be there. Uh, thanks for the invitation. Uh, the, uh, thanks for your patient. Uh, uh, I mean, you are watching very peacefully in my uh, classes, I mean, in my uh, talk. Uh, it's my maiden attempt. Thanks for your uh, invitation, sir, once again, for the members and everyone who is on the line. Any question? Uh, is there any queries? Okay, ma'am. There is a no queries. Uh, what of thanks uh, by myself. Uh, your session is more informative and interesting. Uh, it is to induce the young research and uh, uh, assistant professor minds to do the research in your area. So thank you very much for your uh, wonderful presentation, ma'am. So we have uh, provided another one session to give our uh, a long session. Uh, we, will, uh, we will try to provide uh, uh, another one session to you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for the call. Sir. Thank, Thank you. you so much. So one more uh, announcement to the participants. So is a lunch time for you. Sorry, sorry for the time delay. So all our, all participants ask you to join the meeting at uh, exactly 2:45 p.m. in the same link. Um, uh, be ready for oral presentations. Who are ready to present? Okay. So it's a time for lunch. So you after your lunch, you join the same link at 2:45 uh, p.m. Uh, for the oral presentation. Thank you.